My name is Naftali Brower. I'm the Chief Executive of Spiritual Capital Foundation, and we're partnering with CAS on Creative Conversations. Uh, this morning we had a wonderful conversation, uh, multidisciplinary, and what made it so exciting is that we have people from uh, different perspectives, practitioners and academics, uh, discussing a really uh, major issue, which is remuneration, uh, executive remuneration. And uh, it was interesting to see the interplay between the academics uh, and those on the uh, practical side. One practical idea that emerged was that uh, there's a perception that the more you pay someone, the better they will be at what they're doing, or the more focused or successful they'll become. Uh, and that's actually not necessarily the case. Uh, it, it works to a certain extent, but sometimes uh, money uh, can crowd out other values. Uh, and uh, one of our participants spoke quite movingly about uh, values uh, in more traditional societies like Japan, where people are motivated not so much by money, but by uh, honor, uh, a sense of civic duty and responsibility. Um, the Harvard philosopher Michael Sandel uh, wrote a book about this recently, and that was quite interesting to see this emerge from our conversation. I'm Ruth Bender. I'm a reader in Corporate Financial Strategy at Cranfield School of Management. It's been really stimulating just having a very quiet discussion with just a few people who come at this from very different backgrounds. And we have a lot of common ground and there's a lot of differences. And it's nice that people are talking and other people are listening and then responding to those points. So often the discussion on executive pay is all about, I know what I'm going to say and I'm going to say it regardless and your point of view is wrong. Here what you're finding is we know we're there to listen and respond and it's, it's a very nice vibe and you can air a lot of ideas that don't normally get airtime. I think what we've come up with on this is there's no right answer, which everybody knows anyway. There's no right answer to executive pay. But the thing that's been really obvious from the discussion, at least obvious to me, is that we need bold people who will challenge the status quo. We are where we are and everybody's afraid to stick their head over the parapet and say, I want to do something completely different. Remuneration committees are afraid that if they go one way, the executives will leave. If they go another way, the institutions will vote against them. Consultants are worried that if they devise something too dynamic, it won't be accepted by either party. We just need some leading individuals to say, hang on, we need a change, how about trying this and opening up the system, being less focused on performance related pay with hard metrics, which bear very little resemblance to performance to be honest, and standing back and thinking perhaps we could do this instead. So my name is Daniel Summerfield, a co-head of Responsible Investment at USS Investment Management. I spend a lot of time talking about this subject and working on the subject of executive remuneration. And one of the challenges we face as practitioners is we don't hear from other constituents. People who have may, have, may have other views on, on the subject or the issue. So it's quite useful you know, being involved in a subject on a day-to-day -day basis to be more grounded in terms of understanding other people's perceptions on the matter and actually perhaps getting some food for the thought on how the system can improve. And certainly from the initial discussions today, I found that there are some very interesting ideas that are out there which we perhaps haven't considered as much as we should. I think it's reinforced some of my ideas that the system isn't working as it should, that there are various ways that we can improve the system and make it work more effectively. Yeah, I think the expression is that no problem is so bad that government intervention can't make it worse. And I think we need, as an industry, that is investors, um, companies, consultants, everybody involved in the process of setting pay needs to take a step back and think about how, can, how should it be designed differently to how it looks today. Because clearly the system isn't working as effectively as it should. There are many flaws in it. And the question remains whether it can be resolved by simply tinkering with the existing system or whether it needs a fundamental rethink. And my view is actually it probably needs more of a a strategic overview um, and actually more of a fundamental uh, rethink on, on how it operates and how it's structured. My name is Judith Levy, I'm an executive remuneration consultant and I work for Newbridge Street.
What I found fascinating about this morning is the opportunity to talk with people from all areas of executive remuneration who have very different, you'd have thought very different perspectives, but ultimately we all share sort of common understandings of, of what the problems are and it's interesting to share views. Um, my initial views haven't changed, but it's comforting to know that actually they're shared amongst people um, and that actually we're not working, I'm not working in an isolation um, against people who are holding opposing views, but actually there is a way forward to work together. My message would be that we need to start thinking about what values we want our companies um, to have and how we can try and influence that through the pay structures that we offer people. Um, that perhaps we need to be thinking wider than just the standard metrics that we've always used today, that perhaps there is a new model out there that we should be looking to develop. Uh, Chiz Nakajima from Cass Business School. Um, it's been um, an interesting start of our conversation, uh, but I think uh, most of the points that I've picked up from the conversation have been what I've been quite familiar with in the discussion in regard to executive remuneration. Um, I think the discussion has kind of centred rather around um, the systems within the capital markets um, as to what, who should be um, sort of um, uh, watching over um, perhaps excessive executive pay, etc. What are the mechanisms, whether they're flawed, whether, you know, the current reviews are too uh, somewhat focused on tinkering lits, little bits and pieces. Um, I'm looking forward to actually to later on when we actually widen and expand the actual discussion uh, in regard to perhaps other uh, systems and mechanisms outside of the capital markets, what their roles should be in uh, our debate. Well, from a kind of legal perspective, because I'm a lawyer at the end of the day, um, there, well, there's been quite a bit of talk about responsibility and uh, senior management has been, as it were, compensated for that extra responsibility and extra risks that they're taking. But at the moment, we're not really pursuing um, these um, executives' responsibility when there is a failure. And um, I think there's a fundamental question to be asked as to how, we, how best we can actually ensure that they're actually being compensated for that extra responsibility uh, that they're taking on. Because otherwise, it actually leads to this trust uh, or the loss of trust in the whole system. Because at the moment, I think the general public perceives the situations to be, you know, executives just rewarding themselves uh, when, you know, they're, they're, they're cat catastrophic failures which obviously lead to job losses, uh, graduate un unemployment, and so on and so forth. Uh, my name is David Bolkover and I'm a management writer. We've talked about the, uh, the justifications used for uh, high pay, for high executive pay, and there's been various views around the table. And I think it's very important to have these debates because so much of the, uh, the conversation about high pay accepts uh, certain uh, preconceived ideas and I think only through these conversations, when you go back to uh, you go back to zero and you look at these things from scratch, and you try to assess these uh, arguments in a, with a fresh perspective, only then can you reach fresh conclusions. Well, there's been uh, very uh, very uh, different opinions. We've had a, a remuneration consultant, we've had a, an academic, uh, and all, all, all people from their different backgrounds approach this issue. Uh, in a different way with their own preconceived ideas uh, based on the ideas which are prevalent in their own industry amongst their peers so it's good to uh, speak to people from outside that uh, uh, usual environment. I think there's been a, a complete destruction of the relationship between pay at the top of the executive sphere and in the financial sector between pay and the intrinsic value of the individual and it's causing a real problem I think within society because trust is being lost and this poses a real systemic risk to a free market which I believe has produced incredible wealth for society, produced incredible good for society, but it's under threat and one of the main reasons is the lack of trust caused by high executive pay.